Tonight on Local Light with John Compton, Rob McKinney, president of Seaport Airlines, discusses the challenge of launching a business in the heart of a recession. Now a steadily growing business, Seaport's success is largely a result of the way they treat their guests in an age of frustrating air travel. From a love of flight to running an airline, Rob's story is one of passion and success. That's all tonight on Localite. So Rob, thanks for coming on. It's good, good to have you, nice to meet you. It's great to be here, thanks yeah. for the invitation. Absolutely, well I wanna, before we really jump into your business, because obviously that's gonna be a big part of what we talk about, I wanna talk a little bit about you and where you came from and how this all happened to bring you to the place that you are now, which is CEO of Seaport Air. Sure, I, I've always been an uh, enthusiast in aviation and, and uh, had my heart set on being in the aviation industry in some way, shape, or form. I started flying when I was 16 years old. Now, is that the, is, do you have to be 16 in order to solo? Is that? That's correct, yeah. Okay, was that part of it, or you just? No, I, my parents, out on whim, gave me a gift certificate uh, one Christmas for flying lessons, and it just kind of took off from there. Okay, so then you, did you go to, go on to, how, school to become a pilot or I where did, did you go I, from, from? I did. I went to Purdue University and majored in aviation technology and got most of the rest of my ratings and then it's the normal course. I had to flight instruct for a couple of years, hauled canceled bank checks at night for a couple of years, flew freight and FedEx caravans and then kind of kept working my way up until I was flying Learjets uh, for uh, Bombardier. Oh. And uh, it was about then I made the transition over into management. I went back to school, got my master's degree, and uh, started running small commuter airlines in Hawaii. And did a couple of those until I was approached by the, uh, the original ownership of Seaport to come help them start this brand new airline. Okay. So when you were 16 and learning to fly, was that your plan? You wanted to go on and make a career of this, or was it just you thought it'd be fun, be a private pilot, that sort of a thing. Oh, I definitely wanted to make a career of aviation, but I, at 16, I thought I was going to be flying big jets, you know, hither and thither. The, the whole aviation management really didn't occur to me till probably my early 30s. Okay. And you've been doing that now for how long? Uh, over a decade now. Oh, I've been okay. in management. All right. So now I know your age. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, do you still find, is it still fun for you to fly now that it's such, you know, a, a, it's your business? Is it still enjoyable for you to fly and do you still fly? I do. As a matter of fact, I'm still a qualified line pilot for Seaport Airlines. Um, I'm, I'm, a, a, I'm also a Czech Airman and I can actually give the test to keep our pilots current. Uh, you know, I'm authorized by the FAA. So yeah, I keep myself very current. Uh, I, I enjoy flying a lot more now than I did when I had to do it every single day because now I can do it to fill in or help the company out or actually I can just go do it to give a guy the afternoon off and go have fun. So it's a more of a choice now. So I actually absolutely love it. Okay. Now do you own your own plane? Oh, well, I mean, I guess as CEO of the company, you kind of own all the planes, but yeah, I don't, do you have your own personal plane name? No, I don't. I, I, the Seaport's pretty time consuming, so it's not a lot of time to go have little personal jaunts. So, um, and then I'm around, I can go fly whenever I want, so there's no real need to have my own plane. Yeah. Now, can you fly the, the, uh, the PC-12s, which are, I guess, Pilatus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those are Swiss built airplane, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Swiss built and still still in current production. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and yes, I, I do fly them. I, I can fly the line with paying passengers on board. Can you fly family members if you want to, just for oh. fun, that sort of oh, thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. a nice perk. It is. Uh, it, that's one of the perks of the airline business that all of us that work at Seaport enjoy is that there's we have non-rev agreements with other major airlines. So we not only on Seaport can we fly, but we can trade off and go fly on other carriers when there's space available. Okay. Well, so you guys started Seaport in 2008, mm -hmm. and you actually were living in Maui in 2000, well, until 2007 when you moved over to Portland, Vancouver area. Um, tell me about how that developed into, okay, I'm going to transition over here, and we're going to do this, this airline, which you guys have done an awesome job too, like with your marketing and your image, and it's very, it's very top tier. Thanks, thanks. Sure. Yeah, we're very proud of the product that we have. The, the transition was that I had previously worked on two different airlines uh, over in Hawaii, and I, I had been fixing problems that other people had created, and this was an opportunity to really start with a blank slate and, and bring something up that, that was mostly my image and what I, what I believed is the right way to run a company, both in, the, in terms of how you treat employees and then how you treat your, your passengers. And you guys actually call your um, your passengers 
or customers, guests. We do. That's exactly how we, whether you're in one of our private terminals, you know, uh, enjoying a voodoo donut, or you're on one of our airplanes, we believe that if we treat you as our guest, then you will come back time and time again, and you might even tell your friends. Right, right. Now, those planes, how many do they seat? Like 14? Nine. Nine. Okay. Yes. So there must not be like a flight attendant or in-flight no. service or anything like that. Plus, nope. they're such short routes, I would it, imagine. It, it's exactly. It's necessary. Yeah, what, what we, our real sales proposition is time. That the seaport was envisioned originally to serve the Seattle-Portland market. That's where the name comes from. And it was so that, you know, with, you could show up 15 minutes prior to your flight, keep your bottle of water, your shoes on, hopefully your dignity intact. And before you know it, you're downtown Seattle. You can do a whole day's worth of business uh, and then be back for, with your family for dinner. Now, do you fly into SeaTac or do you fly to one of the other air, smaller airports? We go into Boeing Field, which is not necessarily smaller, but it's definitely closer to downtown. It's, it's a real quick seven-minute drive from uh, Boeing Field to downtown Seattle. Okay, so much less congested. Yeah. So who's typically flying with you guys? Because you do seven flights per day. Mm -hmm between Portland and Seattle. We do. And so, obviously business travelers, but are these also, I mean, who, who are these types of people? Give us an idea of who's flying with you. Well, on that specific route, it is virtually all business travel. That it's, we, since we don't go into SeaTac, it's not really possible to connect with Seaport. So it's people that, both in Seattle, coming to do a day's worth of business in Portland, or people in Portland want to do a day's worth of business in Seattle, that's our target customer. Now, if you branch out to our other routes, that flips completely the other way around. It's primarily leisure travel, people coming from, say, Pendleton, Oregon, or Newport, Oregon, into Portland to connect to go someplace else. Okay. So, where, where are you guys actually at? Are you at Flightcraft in Portland? Is that where people would come if they were coming to take one of your flights? You turn in uh, at the Flightcraft entrance, but we actually have our own terminal that's between Flightcraft and the main terminal that's exclusively ours. Okay. Now, do people have... Is, is everything a carry-on, or is there an actual baggage service? No, you can check bags just you like you know, any other. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Well, we'll keep talking about this when we come back. We'll take a quick break here. You guys stick with us. We'll be right back. After the break. Our primary focus is to serve the people of Pendleton so that they can hop, you know, they can park for free in Pendleton. 